The financial crisis of 2008, or Great Recession, is considered the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. Now, over a decade later, many are still wondering what has changed, and more importantly, how this type of economic disaster can be avoided in the future. It's difficult to define the exact cause of the 2008 crisis, but the collapse of the American housing market was one of the greatest factors. It started a chain reaction that led to the bankruptcy of the Lehman Brothers firm and soon had a crippling effect on the American and European economies. But what happened? In the early 2000s, interest rates were so low that many Americans borrowed money to buy houses, causing house prices to increase rapidly. This episode is known as the US housing bubble and lasted until early 2006, when house prices peaked. The burst of that bubble is considered one of the main causes of the Great Recession. It started as a crisis in the subprime mortgage market and snowballed into a global collapse. The world economy experienced plummeting house prices and a sharp increase in unemployment rates. In the US, more than 8 million citizens lost their jobs, approximately 2.5 million businesses were devastated, and close to 4 million homes were foreclosed in less than two years. Income inequality and increased debt made many people lose faith in the economic system. The recession officially ended in 2009, but its immediate effects lasted much longer than that. The unemployment rate in America reached 10% in 2009, and only recovered to pre-crisis levels in 2016. The crisis brought the bank's potential shortcomings to light for the first time for millions of people around the world. But why does it still matter today? The crisis is a reminder that policy matters. The events of 2008 were essentially caused by decisions made years before by regulators, politicians and policymakers. It's been a decade since the Great Recession, and regulators insist that the global financial system has been altered since then. They say that safety measures have been enhanced and the current system is stronger. It is true that some problems have been solved, but concerns are still looming. So, could this type of economic crisis happen again? Well, the short answer is yes. Even though a lot has changed and many new rules are being enforced, the financial system is still managed by the same governing bodies and power is still highly centralised. Many banks are offering high-risk loans once again and although default rates are low today, that could change very quickly. With fiat currencies like the US dollar or British pound, the amount of money in circulation increases unpredictably because central banks and governments can decide when to make new money. But when the money supply increases too fast, nations may be subjected to economic disasters caused by hyperinflation. So what's the solution? In 2008, as the world was feeling the shock of the financial crisis, a solution to many of the issues with the existing system was being devised. Bitcoin. Unlike fiat currencies, Bitcoin is decentralized. This means it's not controlled by a government or central bank. Instead, the creation of new coins is determined by a protocol, a predefined set of rules. Bitcoin runs on a distributed system, meaning that the protocol rules are enforced and validated by a huge network, spread all around the world. Also, the distributed work of validators ensures that new coins are issued at a steady, predefined pace. Besides the controlled issuance rate, the Bitcoin protocol also establishes a fixed maximum supply. Only 21 million coins will ever be created. This means that there are no surprises when it comes to its current and future supply. What's more, Bitcoin is open source, so anyone can contribute and participate in its development, as opposed to the traditional financial system, controlled by authorities and central banks. Although it has been a decade since the 2008 financial crisis, people haven't forgotten how fragile the international banking system really is. Cryptocurrencies still have a long way to go, but they represent a viable alternative for the traditional fiat system. Such decentralized economic networks may bring financial independence where there is none and have the potential to create a better society going forward. To learn more about economics and cryptocurrency, don't forget to watch our other videos at Binance Academy.